From a fallout shelter in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Holy bucket. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Mike is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. You did one very good thing. You lied. You made something up. Keep that part of your brain working, all right? we get those girls over here, your first instinct is going to be to open up, okay? To tell the truth. Fight it. Just keep it interesting. Play up your novelty. You're a 16-year-old in a bar. Why? Oh, I don't know. My father owns the bar. Uh, you got a month to live. Uh, you're an actor researching. I don't know. Improvise. But this is a lot of information, okay? I'm you the keys to the kingdom here, Nick. Yeah, I know. How many boys your age get an opportunity like this, huh? Yes. So, uh, how often do you like you know, like, like get somebody to, to go home with you. Every night. Oh, shit. Just because you're not having sex, Nick, doesn't mean the rest of us are sitting around playing cribbage. What's cribbage? It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. This is the summer school edition of Lycus 101. And I know for a fact that many of you out there uh, are here because you've been left back. And so we are forced to review some of the course material that, unfortunately, you've been ignoring or forgetting to study. So let's review. And no matter how many times I tell you, a lot of you guys just don't get it. The purpose of dating is getting laid. That is the one and only purpose of dating. I don't care if you're gay or straight, male or female. That is the main purpose of getting out on a date with somebody. It, it, it's getting laid. Now, if for some reason, you have a date scheduled for this weekend, and getting laid is not a likelihood, cancel that date right now. Don't even wait until I finish this sentence. Cancel the date now. Call her up and cancel. Because you clearly were forgetting the lessons you learned here. Women are to be used and tossed like a used Kleenex. Use them and lose them. Pump them and dump them. Bang them and clang them. That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, you, you know, come on. The purpose of getting laid is not to meet somebody for coffee. The purpose of uh, the, the purpose of going out on a date is not to be uh, out there uh, watching foreign films with somebody or. Uh, studying uh, for your final exams or uh, drinking tea together or uh, taking a walk or having a picnic. Your goal is getting laid. If you are out with somebody and you are not getting laid, stop seeing that person right now. Stop it. Immediately. Let me point out to you also, the purpose of this course is not to help you with your marriage and to help you with your relationship. We don't believe that you should be getting married, that there's no benefit to men to get married. And as far as relationships are concerned, uh, why be in a relationship when you can simply get laid? Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? 
We definitely believe that. We believe with the three strikes, you're out rule here at Lycus 101. You know, if a woman does not put out in three dates, there's no chemistry, and nothing you do is going to make that happen. You give it three dates. If it hasn't happened, move on. You don't spend more than $40 on a date. Now, remember, uh, we're not adjusting for inflation. The bottom line here is that, you know, we never did add in the cost of gasoline to that $40. You're going to need to, you're going to need to buy gasoline even if you just drive out to dinner and have it yourself. So we're not counting the cost of gasoline. We're talking about drinks or food or movies or whatever. $40 is the maximum. No concert tickets, no sports events. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. Please, I I'm begging you. As your professor, I am begging you. No single mothers, no single mothers, no single mothers, unless you have documented evidence. By the way, unless you, first of all, you're not going to fall in love with them. Second of all, unless you have documented evidence that your sperm count is zero, <laughs> and I mean zero. Uh, you don't date single mothers. You just don't. Okay? If you want to use single mothers as a booty call, if you want to lie to them about your vasectomy, okay. I'll buy in on that, but your sperm count it better not be one or two or 200. It better be zero. Okay? You, you have sex with a condom 100% of the time. 100% of the time. We do not tolerate chicks text messaging when we're on a date with them. We do not tolerate chicks uh, making phone calls or taking phone calls on their cell phone while they're with us. That's out. We don't believe in chicks coming to our place and having sex at our place. If we can avoid that, we avoid that. That's because we want to control uh, how long they're, they're going to be with us and when we're getting out. If you go to her place, you go, you have sex, you towel off Big Jim and the twins, and then you get out of there. No staying over, no spooning, no hugging, no caressing, no kissing, uh, no telling her how wonderful she is. Or you can see a long future together. Just get your ass out of there. Just get your ass out of there. Do you understand? Seriously. Some of you guys make me sick. You really do. You've got no game. Having game means you could do without any one of these bitches. Having game means that you, you, you treat chicks like what they are. They are sperm receptacles. Okay? Stop feeling guilty about that. The minute you feel guilty, your game is ruined. There isn't any. You understand? No banging chicks at your office. No dating chicks at your office. Don't screw up your career unless you don't mind losing your job because you might lose your job over something like that. Just don't do it. There's plenty of other chicks who work at other offices. You can date them freely. You can use and abuse them if you like. By the way, as a Likus 101 student, you accept the concept that women love to be treated like crap the worse you treat them the more they come back for more. Nice guys don't get laid. Guys who treat women like crap do. You don't want to sit and listen to her complain about all the other guys she's dated who treated her like crap. You want to be the guy she complains about to the next nice guy. Okay, If you find yourself with a woman and all you hear her talking about is all the other guys and how miserably they treated her, you're doing it wrong. You need to be treating her like crap because all those guys who treated her like crap, they all got laid. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I'm not making this up. I'm not exaggerating. Every one of those guys she's complaining about, every one of them got laid. So imagine this. You haven't gotten any from her and you're sitting there like a little girl listening to her. Man, 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 man. But all the other guys, now they treated her like crap. They get Get the message. The guys who treated her like crap, they all got her to take her clothes off. Something you haven't accomplished. Get the message. Get the message. 
if the guys who treat her like crap all got laid, you have to treat her like crap. I want to be the guy she's complaining about to the next guy. I don't date women who I'd like those personal ads online or Craigslist or whatever. They say things like, oh, I'm ready to settle down. I'm done partying. I've had my fun. Forget it. Tell that to the next guy. Me, if you're with me, you're partying with me, you're getting down with me, you're having sex with me. When you're done sowing your wild oats, tell that to the next guy after me. But don't tell me. I'd love to be the guy who treated you so bad that you decided to finally settle down with somebody else. Do you know how many women who, after they were with me, they got married to the next guy? Do you know how many women who, after they were with me, had children with the next guy? I have an ex-wife who has a son. Are you kidding me? I had an ex-wife who met me. When I was making an appearance, so she could show me pictures of her kid. I'm not kidding. Pictures of her kid. She went, got with some other guy, and had a kid. We didn't have a kid. I want to be the guy she complains about to all the other guys in the future. Who won't be getting laid. <laughs> I can tell you, I've treated many women like crap. And I, I just, I, you guys don't believe it. You find it hard to believe because your mommy told you to treat women with respect. And women want a guy who cries and stuff. Your dad was a jerk and was, he was a creep and he's a deadbeat. I can't tell you how many women, when I treat them like crap, they come back for more. They come back for more. They call me. They text me. They send me email. They just can't get enough. If you are not treating women like crap, you're just not getting everything you can out of the women you're meeting. My job as your professor is to keep you from wasting time, money, and energy on women who will never give you what you want, and that is sex. My job also is to keep you out of commitments, keep you out of relationships, and most importantly, keep you out of marriage. That is my goal. Uh, you may have questions. Maybe you want to sharpen your game a bit. This is the place to come. Maybe you are a woman who violently disagrees with your professor, or maybe you're one of those single mothers we're always talking about, telling the guys to stay away from. We encourage vigorous classroom discussion, debate, and even if you disagree, I want to hear from you. All you have to do is put your finger on the keypad. Tom Likas. I kind of hate uh, leaving messages or sending text messages. To me, text messaging is so impersonal. Well, I like it. Uh, I like things as impersonal as they can get. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? I mean, these are chicks we're talking about here. Okay, uh, you're right. I bought it. Yeah. We're, we're, no, we're not looking for romance here. No. We're looking to do a little uh, little offshore drilling. You know what I'm talking about? It's Like Is 101 on the Tom Like Is Show. The Tom Likas Show, your professor, Likas 101. Every week at this time. Make it happen. Remember to stop by every week at this time for your education. 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's our telephone number. Here comes Lindsay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Lindsay. Hey, I'm a big fan. I just, uh, you know, I couldn't help myself. I was listening. By the way, let me just point something. I just want to point something out. Uh, as a, as, as someone who has made crank calls since I was six years old, yeah. the best way to make a crank call, you might write this down, is to call the host and say, Hey, I love your show. I listen all the time. I'm a big oh, fan. Because what call. usually follows Yes. is some kind of cutting remark or some kind of obscenity or <laughs> and and I just want people to know that that technique I've been using since I was about 6 years old calling radio stations so just a note for those of you who want to make a crank call one technique would be to call and say dude love your show and then you hit it between the eyes okay I'm sorry go ahead Lindsay. okay so let me let me just do that then mine is the whole prank call business I just you know, I couldn't help but overhear how women love to be used and abused. And I was just yes. wondering if you've ever been used and abused and how much you liked it. 
It's not a matter of how much I liked it. You see, the, here's the bottom line. It's not a matter of whether you think I like it or not. It's how I react and whether I continue to allow myself to be used and abused. I look at the results. Okay. Right. People may say they hate being used and abused, but then they keep hooking up with people who use and abuse them. I feel you. That's the way it is. I know what you mean, Tom. I so, yeah, I mean, have you ever noticed these? Let's just take the example of women who have boyfriends who beat them. Okay. Have you noticed how many of these women haven't just had one guy who beats them? It's one after another after another. Now, I'm not sure. But by the way, let me make this very clear. Uh, domestic violence, illegal, wrong, and we should prosecute people who commit violent acts to the fullest extent of the law, and nobody should read anything I say as meaning we should abuse people physically, ever. Okay, now now that I've said that, have you noticed these jigs keep hooking up with guys like that over and over and over? Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. You so think that all women so are they may say they, I hurt me again, he burned my house down, <laughs> and they keep dating guys like that. <laughs> no, I know. So mean, I don't really care women if women like say, it, I never said all, generally speaking, dear. I'm sure there are exceptions like you who wouldn't tolerate things like that. But generally speaking, yeah. it's generally true. So I don't really care if there's an occasional exception to the rule. So what? Right. There's occasionally somebody who jumps off a 45-story building and survives. That does <laughs> happen. Wouldn't recommend jumping off a 45-story building. Okay, so I'll the bottom try, line I'll is just because me. there's an occasional person like you, a woman who calls up and says, well, you think like you when you an abuse. The fact is, <laughs> you have to look at the numbers. Most women you use and abuse come back for more. I guess you're right. Do you know there are women I have I have treated like crap in the past who still call me? Yeah. They still call me. They still want the like? The like is? They want a piece of the rock. They want a piece of the rock or what? Uh, you sound uh, like a rock, Professor. Thank uh, you very much. You know, I just needed to get told, I guess. Just, you, you know, I, I, like dating, I like dating Latinas. Uh, there's a reason. Yeah, yeah, the Latinas. And the, the ones who call me more to see, yeah, you know why they do. <laughs> Why? <laughs> those who know, know, and those who don't, don't. All, okay. All I know is tonight about eight. Them. Tonight about eight, I'll be serving a little blood sausage. <laughs> Suit yourself. Suit yourself, Tom. Thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate the call. <laughs> and you get a little crank call us and as a bonus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Daniel on Lagos one hundred one. Hello. Hey, D hey, what's going on? That's doing a radio show here. Yeah, first time, first time caller. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to share with you my successes with uh, single moms and using Craigslist. What do you mean your success? You mean the fact that you were able to bang so many of them? Yeah, and I stumbled oh, across. But there's a uh, reason for that. On, uh, by the way, have you noticed how many BBWs are on Craigslist looking to get impregnated <laughs> by attractive men? No, but that's not where I'm looking. I I stumbled across this uh, little gold mine on accident. I answered an ad for a, a room for rent, and you know what they call me. She didn't tell you. She didn't tell you that that room was located between her left thigh and her right thigh. <laughs> that's why I found it. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's these single moms out there looking to rent out these rooms. And, you know, I answered the ad, and it turns out she was a single mom with right. kids. And now once you've answered the ad, you probably had to fill out a credit application. So she's got your name, your social security number. No, no, no. I'm just going to go see the I just went to go see the room. This was I didn't even go there with this. So experience. you went to see the room, and you nailed her. Yeah, well, not the same day, but she called me back to see if I wanted so to see So she's the room got your there. phone number. Yeah. And now, if she ever had to track you down because she forgot to take the pill that day or whatever, uh, she could find you. Yeah, I mean, that's not that's not happening, though. We got a little agreement now. What agreement is that? Just go over whenever I want. Yeah, and what happens when she forgets to take the pill? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I'm, all, I'm using a condom every time. Uh, condoms leak, condoms slip, condoms break. Condoms are a backup system. Uh -huh. yeah, Single well, mothers, you already know what they're going to do if they get knocked up. Well, I mean, that's what I, I, 
I'm, I don't want to go down that road, but... <laughs> You're already going down that road. No, but I'm just... I'm like, well, that's not my point. My point is, like, um, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just finding single moms through Craigslist. I pre-qualify them. I make sure they have kids. But they pre-qualify you. They, when they know your name and your phone number, they can track you down and make you pay if there's an accident. <laughs> you know what? I never saw it that way. See it that way. Yeah. Well, I'm I mean, I, have you never heard of that before? What is that? Have you never heard of that before? I have. So what makes you think it couldn't happen to you? Well, that's not the point of my call, Tom. I'm just trying to share, you know, my success story. We know it. Single mothers are the easiest to bang because if there's an accident, there's no risk to them and all the risk is to you. All right. Well, you know, I... I follow all have you ever been moms. suspicious? No, you don't if you're dating single moms. Have you ever ever said to yourself about something, if they're giving something away for free, it can't be that good? That's true. Okay. So if you tell me the easiest women to bang are single mothers on Craigslist, why do you think that might be? That's a good point. <laughs> I know. You know. But I, I didn't look at it that way. I mean, I just... Look at it that way. I will. I will. There's a reason they're giving it away so freely. But, I mean, I'll take it. But, you know, I mean... Yeah, but, don't, know, but you'll I'm... take it, but one day you'll have to pay for it. Ever go into a, a tasting room at a winery? Yeah, all the time. And if you keep tasting, eventually they're going to look at you and say, when are you going to buy a bottle of wine? <laughs> or a case. Okay. Yep. You see, people don't give stuff away for nothing. Ever go to Baskin Robbins and ask them for a taste of ice cream? Of course. They expect you to buy ice cream. So you're really but not you getting anything for free because <laughs> uh, after they give you that taste, if you like bubblegum ice cream, they expect you to put it on a cone. Yeah. You can't walk yeah. in and taste 31 flavors and then leave. I guess I have to cover my tracks better and just get in and get out. <laughs> and even then, you've left your DNA imprint. <laughs> All right, Tom, can you blow me up? I certainly can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Erica on Like Us 101. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. Hi, how are you? Great. Uh, well, I have to, um, I to tell you, um, actually... A few, like a year and a half ago, I had like lost my virginity to this guy that I was dating. Um, I really liked him a lot, and I found out that he was like dating other girls, you know? He's like, Wait a, a minute, how, how old is he? He's 32. Why would you think that a 32 year old man would not be dating a variety of girls? I don't know, I was just really like, because he told me that you he were real, no, no, you were real young and immature. Yeah. And that's why you you just don't know what men are like. Yeah. And the way men are is, when we are single, we are dating a variety of girls. We are not sitting home on our thumbs waiting for the next girlfriend to come along. Mm -hmm. We go out and audition them, nightly. But then he told me that he wasn't, and that he only wanted to be with me. and all Because that's what he had to say. Well, that's true. But then he got mad, because then, like, I was kind of upset, and then, like... I ended up telling his cousin I was crying to his cousin, and his cousin was being so nice to me, and I told him what happened, and, like, he started calling me, and we started talking, and then one one time when I was crying, and he, he was calling me the B word, and being mean to me, and I ended up, like, you know, hooking up with his cousin. And That's was, great. Well, guess what? His cousin used you just like he did. Yeah, I know, but then he got, he found out. He was so upset, and he went to the place where his cousin was because his cousin was in jail after uh, when he found out, and he went and threatened him in front of the cops, in front of everyone. Well, this, the uh, well, this sounds like true love, and I must tell you, you are just about as immature as you were before you got laid the first time. Mm -hmm, and now, well, now it's like every time like he calls me, he calls me and tells me that I ruined his life because he's going to go to jail because he's still fighting the case, and then like. So, so what is your question? Well, what do you think? Uh, like, did I ruin his life? Because he calls me every time, calling me an evil girl. That Why do you care? Me, that you, he loved me and that, you know. You thought you did the right, by, by the way, he doesn't love you and you don't love him or his cousin. Mm-hmm. I think I love him. 
No, you don't. When you love somebody, you don't bang their cousin. But I was, like, upset and I was crying. I don't care. That doesn't excuse it. So every so then, time you're crying, you might have sex with somebody else? No. Who'd, who'd want to get with somebody like that as a girlfriend? Forget it. No, no one, but, like, I was so stupid, and it was a year ago. I, I oh, like, and now, oh, it's a whole year now. You're so much more mature now. So then is he right for calling me every day? <sighs> who cares whether he's right? You shouldn't have a boyfriend. Let's start with that. You are too young and immature to be in a serious relationship. Well, what if it's real love? Like, what It if isn't. If it was real love, you wouldn't have effed his cousin. Well, he was being with the girl. I too. don't care. It's his cousin. Okay. And you wouldn't have done it. So then why does he still call me? Again, you don't love him. Okay. You don't love him and he he doesn't want me either who cares you don't love him well, i have feelings for him no here's what happened you 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 gave up your virginity to him and so you feel that there should be some kind of connection to justify it but there isn't so then why does he call me we're not talking about him. We're talking about you. Okay, well, I messed up. And I don't care what I, he does. I mean, I apologize. I, I feel really I don't about care him. what he does. You don't love him. I feel really bad about it, though. I, you can feel bad about it, but you don't love him. So then what should I do? Just, like, not talk to him no more? Or? Just move on with your life. Not have a boyfriend, just date. Because I haven't Correct. really dated anybody. Like, what? I always get hit on, but I just never... Why not? Why, why don't you? I don't know. I'm just kind of like... I haven't really been Immature. out there. Immature? You haven't been out there because you won't go out there. Yeah, that's true. I'm... That's true. And then he checks my phone. Like, every time I go... Well, again, so so he's controlling. And he throws things and he... Well, then, there you go. And, and you love him. You I mean, love him. I mean, I have feelings for him and I don't understand I why. have feelings for him, but he throws things at me and I love him and he hits me and I love him. But like he's the one always calling me everywhere. He hits my, you too, right? He, he hits you too, right? He's been hitting you. No, he hasn't yet. Well, he's just don't he hasn't it. yet. I don't know if he's going to because he gets mad, really mad because he says. Of course he is. Oh yeah, he'll beat you if he's throwing things at you. Oh, that's the next step, dear. He just said like you better not find out that I'm talking to any guys, and he, he'll check my. Well, again, that's so you, you now we find out you're with an abusive individual and you love him. Well, that's why I went crying to his cousin, uh, trying to ask him... Who is I also think. an abusive individual because he took full advantage of the situation behind his cousin's back. And his cousin admitted that I was crying. That I don't he care if you were crying. I don't care what the reason is that he boned you, okay? I don't care. Okay, well, you're right then. Okay. I don't care about any of these other people. I'm talking about you, you see? And darling, you have, you have minimal experience... So you have to take my word on this. This guy is an abusive, controlling individual. Okay? He's the kind of person who will beat you, and if you stay long enough, eventually he might kill you. He says that he should, he could do what he wants because he's a guy. He could have ten, ten orgy, uh, orgy with ten girls, and I have to do whatever he and says. And you love him. No, that's You love him. You told me you love him. Well, it's like he's all I don't know, so it's like hard. Well, whose fault is that? Right? Your fault. That's why you need to date a variety of people, don't you understand? Yeah. I always get asked out. I just don't. Well, then you better pull the trigger on one of those. Just like I'm afraid, like, if he finds out that I'm going out somewhere, then he calls and I'm not home or something. Oh, that sounds like true love. If he calls and finds out I'm not there, he's going to hurt me. Not hurt me, but like, it was ask me where I'm at. Who cares? Well, I hope he doesn't go to jail. I mean, I don't wish that on him. Again, who? Why do you care about him? 
Why don't you care about you? Because I feel bad for what I did a year ago. But I feel bad. You'll ne- look. There's nothing you can do about it. You did it. You did it because you're immature. You're a baby. You have no experience. And and you want to compound the problem by continuing to see the guy. Well, I told him that, that it's over, but then he says that I'm just going to leave him after all this. Yes, you are. And he's like a... Um, and why do you take his calls? Because if not, he'll call my house. Why do you take those calls? Don't you have caller ID, dear? Ever heard of it? Yeah, yeah but my, my family. What do you mean your family? Like... My my mom and my brother. So you still live at home with your parents? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do they know you dated this guy? Yeah, they don't. They don't know what? They don't know that you boned his cousin? No, not everything. They just know that, I, you know, he that I see him and, like, that he's kind of something like that. Well, you live know. with your parents. Why don't you tell your father this guy's threatening to hurt you? Well, because I don't live with my dad. I just live with my mom. Then why don't you tell your mom that? I don't know, because she... I don't want to scare her. Ah, but you don't mind being scared yourself. Well, then, darling, the next thing you have to do is what adults do, and that is you have to get a restraining order. And that means you have to go down to the police station and file a report. Well, it's not like that. I mean, I Yes, wouldn't... it is. It is not. Yes, it is. He likes to go to... You don't know what you're talking about. You're 21 years old, you've dated one guy, and you boned his cousin. Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. So stop talking so much and start listening. You, if you're really in fear, you need to go to the police station and file a report and get a restraining order. No, it's not like that. I'm not yes, I it is. Bad. I feel bad for him. Stop it. Yeah, stop taking his calls. Stop answering him. Stop responding to his text messages or emails or whatever else he's sending you and I move on. Him. You and what? I, I help him. Like, I feel bad. I, I There's nothing you him. can do about it. It's done. It's done. You did it. Yeah, yeah, right. You already did it, and there's a you're gonna he make it up. I told him my life, and that like you know. Oh I'm, really? Well, you know, you don't. You don't. You don't. You're an immature little girl who did something stupid, and immature little girls do stupid things all the time. You just need to move on with your life. If you're afraid that he's going to harm you, you need to go to the police station and file a report. Okay. If you're not afraid he's going to harm you, fine. Okay. By the way, I think he would harm you. I don't think you know what you're talking about. He's already indicated in any variety of ways that he's a violent individual. Mm-hmm. But you don't know what those ways are. He's already thrown things at you. He's already told you, oh, I'm your life. He's threatened you. But, you, oh, no, he would never hurt me. Oh, yeah? You're wrong. Well, you are wrong. I don't know. Wrong. This is crazy. Oh, well, you're probably right. Yeah. I, uh, darling, I have a lifetime of experience, and you have none. You don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Okay, you're right. So you need to do the right thing. You stop talking to him, and you stop responding to text messages or any other communication from him. And if he comes to your house, you do not answer the door. You tell your mother what's going on so that she can tell him to get lost if she's calling the police. And then if you feel like you are physically in danger, you go down to the nearest police station to your home, and you file a report immediately and get a restraining order. No, that- I know. He's not abusive like that. I know I wouldn't Yes, that. he is. Darling, you don't... You- you see, again, you can't shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't. don't you don't. You're right, I don't. I don't understand. But. Well, fine, since you don't understand, just... I, I don't. Since you don't understand, then do what I say. Yeah, you're right. Just do it. I'm trying to help you, and specifically, I'm trying to protect you. Yeah, you're right. So I, don't I, argue with me. And don't tell me I'm wrong. You're a little girl who doesn't know any better. You're right. You are right. Because every time I start forgetting about him, then he'll call me. Like, you're going to stop taking those calls effective immediately. You're not going to explain it. 
You're not going to talk to him about it. But he has a court coming up on Tuesday. Should not your pro- You should not be there, and you should not respond. You are out of this. Just, just ruin his life, and then just, and then. What you going to go there and say it never happened, like all the other abused women say? No, no, he threatened his cousin. He threatened to kill his cousin. The the sh- in front of the sheriff. Like, so why should you be? Why should you be in the courtroom for that? Just, and this happened six months ago when he's fighting the case. Why should you be in the courtroom for that? You're right. I shouldn't because he just cusses at me anyway in there. Fine. So you're not going to court. You hear me? Yes. And you're not taking his calls. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. And you're not responding to text messages, emails, or any other communication from him. Do you hear me? I hear you. And you're going to tell you... Hmm? I just don't want to be an evil person. You already were an evil person. Now learn from your mistake and don't compound it. All right. You were an evil person already, and you can't press the rewind button. You did it. Now forgive yourself and move on, or you're going to get killed. John Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. John Likas. Do you keep the guys near foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's America's professor of getting laid. Tom Like is here. Like is 101 at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Let's say hello to Chantel. Hello, you're on uh, Like is 101 with your professor. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I have a question for you, honey. Mm hmm. Why are you such an a ho? Oh, uh, if you think you're insulting me by saying that, no, no, no. I wear it like a badge. Mm hmm. Because being an a-hole gets a man laid. A-holes get laid more than anybody else. Tom, do you believe in karma? No, I don't. I'm an atheist. I'm not spiritual in any way. And by the way, how have I been rewarded for a lifetime being an a-hole? Two beautiful homes, one in the Hollywood Hills, one up in Santa Barbara County. Luxury car, a seven-figure income. Where's the karma, dear? Nothing. Where's the car? No, no, it doesn't mean nothing. Uh, people who don't have anything say it means nothing. But people who have... If you don't have material things, that doesn't mean you don't have anything. Again, darling, you don't have material things, and so therefore you are critical of those okay, who do. I didn't say I didn't have them, honey. You don't. I, I do, You're 22 years old. No, you don't. No, you I don't. I have self-esteem. I have morals. Right? I have, I have self-esteem. No one's got bigger self-esteem than I have. Are you kidding me? I'm an a-hole. I'm a jerk. I'm a creep. I'm a predator. I take advantage of women, and I kick them out the door. And I love my life. Well, I look forward to hearing the the news about your karma coming back to you. Cause I well, think keep you looking it. forward to it, dear. By the way, I don't know if you know this. Tomorrow, tomorrow is twenty years of broadcasting in, in Los Angeles. Twenty years. 20 years tomorrow is the my twentieth anniversary. Like so you keep you keep on waiting. You keep on women waiting. Women are not pieces of. You meat keep on. Wa- yeah, women offers. are pieces of meat. They're human toilets. They, I'm the human speculum. I, I'm serving blood sausage at eight. Someone's toilet? ass will be cracking wow. when I get off the air. I'm a professor of porn. I'm an amateur gynecologist. I, I'm 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 a, a cunning linguist and a master debater. I have Russian hands and Roman fingers. Is that correct? I'm sorry. If women are a piece of crap, are, are toilet bowls, and your mother is a toilet bowl, so you must be a piece of crap because you came out of her. Is that right? I, I'm a piece of crap. I'm a jerk. I'm a creep. You can't insult me. I mean, I'm, tell, I'm telling you I'm a piece of crap. I'm trying to get the facts straight. Tom, I would like to see your I Know It All certificate. Do you own one of those? I don't need an I Know It All certificate. Here's what I have, darling. I have... A big time radio program. I make big money, and I can buy and sell you. I don't You'll need a certificate. That all means nothing. Oh, I'm going to burn in hell. Okay, now we see there's some religious uh, uh, motivation for this phone call. Well, not necessarily mo- motivation, but I am a spiritual person. Yes, I'm sure you are. That's why you're online listening to the Tom Likas Show. Thank you so much, Miss Spiritual. It's the Tom Likas Show.